Hi, my name is Chris, and I just can't stop making things. I recently got an inflatable wing to help me stay active in the winter. Unfortunately, it's now summer. So I'm going to take this super cheap inflatable stand-up paddleboard and see if I can change it into a high-performance wind-powered inflatable stand-up paddleboard. In order to do that, I'm going to need to do two things. I'm going to need to reduce drag on the bottom of the board, and I'm going to need to add some lateral stability, such as a fin or a dagger board somewhere in the center, so that the board can actually go upwind reasonably well with the wing. You can buy boards that are specially made as wing sup boards, but they probably cost five to seven times more than I paid for this one. So if I can do it for like under 50 bucks, that'd be sweet. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do to reduce drag on the bottom of the board is remove these ridiculous rubbery fins that do nothing. I think the cheap paddleboard companies put them on there just to make it look more like a surfboard, but it's not a surfboard, so take them off. I heated the base of the fin with a heat gun to hopefully soften the glue a little bit, grabbed a random plastic tool from a drawer. I think it's intended to be used for clay or something, but it's doing a different job today. I used that tool to slowly but surely separate the fin base from the board. Not a quick process, and it required reheating the area every couple minutes just to keep the glue soft. Eventually, I got the fins off without destroying my board. Yay. It did, however, still look extremely ugly, so I grabbed some acetone and did a bit of scrubbing. There, that's less embarrassing, Lorinda. One of the problems with inflatable stand-up paddle boards is that by the nature of their construction, all the edges are like this rounded shape. The problem with that is that water likes following curves, so the water will be going along the bottom as you're moving forward, and then it's gonna lift up here and cause a little swirl or something behind there because it wants to stick to the curve of the board. And that's gonna create way more drag and slow you down. So what I need to do is create a sharp edge here so that the water can release and you can have speed on your board. So I decided to change the round edge of my board to a square edge. I used this funky tool to figure out the curve of the edge. I then traced it onto some paper and scanned it into my computer so I could recreate it using some software that I love very, very much, Plasticity. I 3D printed that tiny little skateboard ramp, put masking tape around the back edge of my board, and then figured out where the ramp should sit so it continues the flat plane of the bottom of the board. Mark the back edge on the masking tape, and then continued that line with the same inset all the way around the tape. I took a picture as straight on as I could, also making sure it included the ruler. I then imported that picture into plasticity and used the ruler to make sure it was the right scale. I then drew a line that followed the curve of the tape, and then told the skateboard ramp to follow that line. Boom, I've got an edge. I sharpened the ends of the rail and cut it into the easiest puzzle you've ever done so it would fit on my 3D printer. I used 95A TPU because it's a flexible filament and I still wanted to be able to roll up the board. It turned out pretty good, although I did have an issue with it that I will show you later. Now, the other thing I'm going to need is a dagger board. This is a fin that'll sit more toward the center of the board than the tail fin, and its job is to provide lateral stability so you can actually sail up wind. So what I'm going to do is install a second permanent fin box on the bottom of my board, and instead of buying one, I'm going to 3D print it. I did a little bit of an experiment here and used the hardest flexible filament I could find, which is 98A TPU. I just figured that since the board is flexible, it might be a good idea to make it out of something with similar properties. So this actually turned out pretty cool. It's a little bit flexible, but it's still pretty tough. That's what it sounds like when it hits my counter. Hopefully it doesn't have too much flex, but I guess we'll find out. I happen to have a roll of this random rubberized cloth material that I picked up from the thrift store for two bucks. I think it's probably a remnant from a canvas repair place or something like that. I'm gonna use it to make an extra flange around the fin base, giving me more surface area for gluing. But before I glue it down, I've gotta make sure it's gonna be in the right spot. So when I roll up the board, it naturally sits in the flat section, not the bent over section. All right, with everything set up, it was time to awkwardly take my board into the garage for some gluing. Hand to lay the board makes a super nice table, which I protected with a fancy tablecloth. I roughed up my gluing surfaces with some sandpaper, grabbed some alcohol, and gave them a good clean. I'm using HH66 vinyl cement, which is kind of expensive. However, I learned my lesson last year when I tried to do a very similar thing to this, using regular contact cement from the hardware store. 
After only a few days of fooling around on the water with, yes, a homemade wing, the glue had all started to come apart, so I had to just rip it all off and call it a summer. All that to say, as much as I hate to admit it, sometimes you gotta use the right stuff for the job. Speaking of the job, here I am applying HH66 around the rim of both pieces so I can glue them together and make them into one piece. For most of the gluing here, I used two coats of glue letting the first dry before applying the second one. I'm not really sure if that's that much more effective, but I read it somewhere, so that's what I did. HH66 works like contact cement, where you let both halves dry, and then they instantly bond once they touch. I applied lots of pressure to achieve a good bond with a wrench. In order to get the fin box on straight, I tied a string from the fin right up to the nose and taped it in place. And if you're wondering where I actually put my fin box, it was about 88 centimeters from the rear fin box, center to center. Now all I had to do was line up my fin box with the center line, remove the tape from before, move the line to the side, and mark the front center. Do the same on the back, and now I can get rid of my center line. Replace the fin box in its appropriate location, and apply masking tape all the way around the fin box, leaving maybe one or two millimeters space. And yes, I made that skinny tape using my skinny tape making technique. I'll link that video in the description. I'm using tape to keep everything clean so I don't end up with any weird glue smears sticking out when I'm done. Clean it up with some alcohol, glue up the fin box and the board. Again, I used two coats here. And then once the glue was dry, I very, very carefully lined up the front alignment marks holding the side flaps up and slowly lowered that fin box down into place. A little bit of wrench rubbing and that's it for the fin box. Now for the tail edge, I glued those puzzle pieces together. However, I did it a little differently as I put them together while the glue was still wet and then just waited for them to dry. I masked around the edges and applied my glue. Once the glue was no longer tacky, I threw down some thin cardboard strips so that I could get the tail edge in the correct position without it sticking where I didn't want it. I then carefully pressed it down from the back to the front, sliding the cardboard strips up and out of the way as I went. Once it was all stuck down, I could pull the tape off for a nice clean-ish edge. The one last thing I wanted to do was maybe protect the point of that tail edge from peeling back, so I cut a cute little patch out of my material and glued it over the point. And that's it, my board is done. Ready to go wing supping. Oh yeah, I also made a big old wooden fin, but maybe I won't go into that right now. Instead, let's go to the lake and try it out. Unfortunately for me, but fortunately for my family, there was no wind at the lake. What I did find out, however, was that my tail strip was not waterproof. I guess because in trying to keep it as flexible as possible, I didn't have thick enough top, bottom, or edge layers. So I did what any wing supper would do and took it off to try again. It was kind of good in a way that I had to take it off because it showed me that the glue actually stuck pretty darn well. And since I was starting again, I thought I'd try something a little different and use some softer TPU. It's 85A. I printed it with more layers and more infill, and instead of doing a puzzle piece edge, I did a zigzag edge. Though in hindsight, I'd stick with the puzzle piece. Stuck it onto my board, and went to the lake again. Think I can do it without even getting wet? No. <laughs> no, I do not. So little thing. Okay. Here we go. Okay, without even getting wet, take one. Ready for this? Catch you later. Life 
I think I'd call this project a success in a lot of ways. None of my extra bits and pieces broke and they all stayed attached to the board, at least for the most part. But I'll get to that in the part where I talk about what didn't go quite as well. My main goal with this was to be able to sail away and then sail back to where I started, which means it needed the ability to sail upwind and it was able to do that. And it felt like I got a reasonable speed for the amount of wind that was there. Um, I have no idea how fast it was going, but it was gurgling along nicely. I did take it out in two different locations, which you can probably tell from the video. The first one was more dreary looking and the second one was a little nicer looking. The first place I went, the wind was stronger and there was more wave action. But interestingly, it seemed like I was actually going slower there. So I think maybe the waves slowed me down a little bit or it was an optical illusion or I just wasn't doing it as well because I didn't know what I was doing as much yet then maybe. So things that could be improved. I wish I could have been able to sail upwind just a little bit further because if you got too far downwind, it was a lot of zigzagging to get back to where you started. I'm not 100% sold on using TPU to print this middle fin box. It's good because it's basically indestructible, but on the other side, it still is a bit flexible. So that fin is flexing in there when there's pressure against it. And with my fin, it kind of wore the bottom corner away from the flexing and rubbing on the base. Of course, my fin was just made from a plain old sheet of plywood that I coated with some varnish. So a regular fin really probably shouldn't have that issue. Also, this bottom edge, when I roll up the board at the connections, it wants to peel away. I probably could have avoided that happening if I had done the puzzle piece connection that I had originally done. So yeah, I'm also thinking of maybe seeing if I can heat weld the sections together so that they're permanently bonded. Interestingly, the HH66 glue is not actually intended for TPU. They don't recommend it. So I think it did pretty well considering it wasn't even necessarily the perfect glue for TPU. Anyways, I'm really happy with it. I'm looking forward to taking it out in some stronger winds, see how it goes, see if I can get it going even faster. And with that, I think we're done. Happy stand up paddleboard winging. Thanks for watching. See ya.